Okay, hi, uh, Josh, and hi, uh, all the leaders. I just uh, want to in introduce uh, you to all our leaders around the world making phone calls, and this video is really to uh, talk about the calls and maybe give some tips to the people doing uh, the phone calls. And I know, Josh, you're going to be doing a, uh, another version of the sales script uh, at some point in the near future. So I'm looking forward to that. And we're just going to be talking uh, in general about uh, some of the, the tips of doing a, a sales call. So thanks, Josh. You want to take it away? Sure. Thank you. Um, that was a great introduction. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is basically matching and mirroring. Um, and basically, so we'll just get right into it. So the most important thing um, in the call is to build rapport. So if you can make um, a kind of connection with that person as fast as possible, that's the most important thing. And um, as Peter knows, he's an NLP coach, um, there's ways that we can build instant rapport within 30 seconds using things like matching and mirroring. Uh, matching and mirroring, um, usually people know it as, you know, if I put my hand up, you know, that person puts their hand up. But when you're in, when you're in a call, there's, you, you don't have body language to pretty much um, communicate and match with. But what you do have, you have your voice. And different things uh, that I think are important uh, is, firstly, the tonality. Um, I'm not sure how it's spelled, but tonality. Um, and that's basically... Um, the way that person speaks. So if they're speaking like in a little bit of like a Scottish accent and you're in the UK and you're in England, then, you know, just try to give, give a little bit of that tonality as well. Like, they're like, oh, hey mate. And you're like, oh, hey mate, how you doing? And it's just like, you're giving, you're giving a little bit of, of the matching to them, like copying a little bit of their words and things like that. Um, and also what's really great about this is you start seeing what kind of way they're viewing the world. So, and as well as speed and things like that. Uh, when we start matching and mirroring and we start slowing down, if they're going slow and going fast, if they're going fast, we're able to kind of see what kind of words they use. So if they're using words like, you know, I feel, um, you know, when I touch something, I just don't um, feel and things like that. That means that they're more of a feeler, uh, you know, that they're more kinetic. So the most important thing is, um, back. This is the most important thing. Uh, so the first one is visual, auditory, and kinetic. So those are the three ways people see the world. Um, yeah. no, I think um, of those, um, speed is also one because uh, the speed of a if, a, if they're visual, they tend to talk faster. And if they're kinesthetic, they tend to talk slower. And so if you're uh, really have someone who starts off really slow and you're a visual person and your automatic speed is to speak really really fast you're going to blow them out of the water and that also lacks into it so if you hear them speaking fast you can use some some visual words whereas if you like is this clear to you do you understand if you're getting a good picture whereas if it's kinesthetic you can use more um you know i want you to get a handle on the what we're, we're giving here and make sure it feels right for you. Um, and then uh, other than that, as you said, tonality, getting it whether it's high or low or repeating the, the words. And if you just remember those few things, yeah, it's amazing the amount of rapport that you can build very, very quickly. So yeah, visual, audio, kinesthetic, it's um, powerful stuff. And it's really interesting how Peter said about, um, you know, get a handle on things. So you want to start creating a list of words um, that, you know, correlate to visual, auditory, and kinetic. So like, like Peter said, we can use things when we're trying to close a sale um, so that people know, people want to feel as concrete. So he's used the word handle. And, uh, you know, this is a, this is something which is, you know, it's a program which is, you know, it's non-kinetic. So when we use words like handle, or we're going to take you by the hand or things like this, which they feel the kinetic, that's how we're able to really use that. 
an auditory. Like, um, so let, the way that I hear you, and just using those kind of words, like, like, you, like you heard, and visual, when they're, when they're you know, going too fast, and you want to you kind of put them back into, into, into the line of order, just kind of creating a picture. So you said that when you're, when you're meditating, you feel like you want to have a peace um, and beautiful, and like using words like this, just so that we can um, really use that connection and people really feel understood and heard when they when they feel like that person not only is listening to them but understands them. And it's very hard to understand someone when we don't really speak in the same language as they do. Like we can be a, a like a very auditory person on the phone, and then when speaking to a visual person, it's almost like we don't understand them. They're trying to talk a different language. But as soon as we learn what type of language using this, the tonality speed, uh, matching and mirroring as much as possible, we'll be able to create that connection. And also just doing this kind of thing, like finding the way they speak and trying to kind of rapport of the same way they, they spoke that words. You can even find things like what city they're growing up in. I've, I've matched and mirrored some songs. Like you can even practice this. Listen to a song you really, really love and just try to copy their tonality, the, the 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 pitch, um, all of that, and then try to get the rapport, and you'll stop feeling, oh my god, this like I found that Sierra was from Australia, just because she would say words, and it, it was just like it was an interesting way she said that. I was like, this is interesting. And then I typed it out. I'm like, whoa, I had no idea she's from Australia. Did you know that? Starting recording now. Okay, so Josh, yeah, that VAK is really powerful, but um, there's a few more other things that we might briefly cover as well over on the, uh, doing the call. And um, I think also one is, um, you know, making sure you stay in control of the conversation. So maybe you just take us through that briefly. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I think it's very important to kind of, I like um, the, the straight line of persuasion. So pretty much we have a straight line, as you can see. Um, and in the beginning of the call is, of course, um, rapport. And then at the end of the close, at the end of the call is uh, the close. And pretty much what we want to do is when someone begins on the call, so, you know, this is the ring, then all of a sudden someone gets in the call. Either they're going to try to pretty much, if we, you, this one is the main line, people will go out of the call and then, you know, all the way down. And, you know, they, they like pretty much don't ever go on a straight line. Is that um, like they get sidetracked when they start talking about their They're talking about their son. Next minute they're talking about the industry. Next yeah. minute, they're talking about someone else's program. <laughs> Next minute, you know that they've got something else to say. And pretty much, what what you what your what your job as a salesperson is to take them from the open all the way to the close. Um, and the only way to do that is by being in control, because they're not going to push themselves to the end line, because they're not a runner, and this isn't a marathon. <laughs> But what you've got to do is when they go off, you've got to make sure that you pull it back and make sure that they know the reason they're on the call with you is because you are the alpha and you're the one in control. So every time they do this, they like, okay, I want to talk to you about how meditation is a, um, you know, is really cool, but, you know, they don't want to talk about what is the reason they're actually on the call for the meditation. So so that's a, well, with the rapport, you know, mm -hmm. if you do start talking about something you've got in common, that also helps the rapport. So it's a, I guess it's a bit of a middle road, isn't it? The middle of both, exactly. You've got so to, them always, we're allowed to always go through it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's good. So you, as long as you sort of can keep them coming back, but allow them if they want to talk about something, and you, because good actually... Like I know when I make sales calls, I'm very interested in their background and what they hope to achieve with the meditation so that A, it gets them enthusiastic. Oh, I'm hoping to help her create a center and I'm hoping to do this. 
So they feel enthusiastic, they get the report, and you've got a hook to say, well, if you want to open this centre and you want to attract people, then meditation groups are a great, uh, increasingly uh, more like, no, like people are coming to meditation more and more these days, and so it's a great hook to bring them in, stuff like that, so to bring them back. Yeah, exactly, and that's it. Like you want, you don't want to be a scared to let them go and talking about their family, but you don't want to be scared that they're not going to come back. So you're, you're, you know, in the, in the, in this part of the call, what we're doing is we're doing questions, and we are um, qualifying them. So we're doing questions and qualifying. So that means that if the person says, um, okay, so we're going to ask them a question. Okay, so how long have you been doing meditation? And then they'll be like, okay, one to two years. Now we're going to qualify them. Um, you know, what's your goals in meditation? Now they're going to tell us, actually, we want to be improving. Okay, question. What's your, what, what, do you, what do you want to have in the next 12 months? Or something like that. Um, so exactly what you said. The, we're using questions and qualifications to get them all the way to the close um, as well. So what's an example of a sentence to kind of, if they're getting really sidetracked, to sort of bring them back? Is there anything off the top of your head? That's a great question, and I think it's very important to have yourself a question that you can always bring the person back. So the best way that, that I like to get back into a conversation is I just do that. I just, in the beginning of the call, you know, I'll let them know, you know, the way this is going to work, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and if you're right for the program, I'll let you in. If you're not right for the program, um, you know, then it'll be happy to help you on the call, but there's nothing else that I can do. So that's something which I'm already taking control of the call. Just an idea. That's just one of my questions. But another thing is, uh, when, they're, when they're getting really off topic, when they're already out in Pluto, um, then what we say is, all right, let's get back to the call. So it's pretty much just like a teacher. You know, the kids can go out and play, but at the end of the day, you've got to get them back in the classroom. The only way to get back in the classroom is you've got to be the alpha again and bring them back to center and pretty much, okay, so let's get back to this. So it doesn't matter how far they go, as long as you're always being at the alpha and bringing them back and then finishing the call. All right, cool. And then um, at the close, you know, are there, how pushy do you need to be? Like if, I mean, everyone always likes to think about these things. Oh, I need to chat to my husband. Uh, I need to think about it. I haven't got the money at the moment, but I'm expecting a paycheck in two weeks. You know, how do you sort of, how hard do you push to, to get a close? And what do you do if you sense that they're really quite unwilling to, they're just nervous. Most of it is a little sort of fear um, and it's a bit of an excuse, but of course you can't go and say, oh, that's just an excuse. So how do you, uh, uh, you know, get them to close? Awesome. So um, the most important thing with the close is that pretty much it's the call to action. So we want to make sure that when we're at the close and we're at the call to action, that you know we've given them the price. So the price isn't actually the close. Um, the price is actually where you get more the most questions, right? Like pretty much until then, it's been it's pretty much you know you've got you've got rapport building. You're always building rapport, and you know you're pretty much you've got the questions, but. At the time where you're now about to close, this is where you want to be able to um, answer all the questions. So the, the questions, they're going to start asking. So let's just say, you know, you say, okay, the price is, you know. Um, $67 a month. 57 57 a month. And then they say, uh, you know, what's in the program? And you're like, okay, well, the program has this, you know, uh, benefits. Um, and then they, you know, we, we just want to kind of keep it high level at this point. We don't want to go too 
to like, okay, the seven videos, you know, like if they're really interested in knowing about the seven videos, you can tell them there's seven videos. There's not seven videos, of course, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is you want to go as detailed as they want to get, but you want to try to stay as high level. Um, but then when we get to the close where now they're getting serious and, you know, you have all your objections so you can answer. If they have any of the objections, you, you want to answer that, that objection. But when there's nothing left, what you've got to do is just kind of assume the close and you want to get the, you want to kind of be like, um, assume the close that they want and then to ask them what their email is so that they can, that you can send the link. So at this point, a lot of people kind of get stuck. We've got their email. Generally, if they sign up, we've always got their email. Yeah, um, exactly. So, so yeah. we're just using this as a closing, assume close. So we don't want to make it like a hard thing for them to close. So we just start, we, we pretty much want to assume they're going to close. If they've stayed us, stay with us until this part of the call, we want to assume that they're going to close. There should be no reason for them not to close. And we want to kind of make that 100% sure. We're not going to take gray, we're going black or white. You know, this is, this is either they're in or they're out. You know, they can think about it if, you know, they have to find out for some reason about their finances if they can't afford the $57 in the month. But, you know, we can call them back at that time. That's only the people who really, you know, you're like, man, this person really needs this meditation. They only have, you know, so much money. You know, if this person is like, um, you know, retired, they're on their pension. Most people do have le sort of, you know, on the face of it, legitimate excuses. Yeah. Uh, but there's yeah. objections for all of that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think maybe like getting a sort of a conditional close is probably also a good idea to sort of say, well, look, as you know, assume you know, assuming that in seven days you get the money, you know, are you um, will you be signing up? Or uh, I know that you're going through an issue at the moment. You know, some people might have, oh, my son is sick in hospital, and I just can't. I don't want to do anything until that crisis is over or whatever. Um, so you might want to, you know, you have to be very polite here, but sort of say, well, I get that there's a bit of a crisis going on in your life. So what are you saying? Uh, what you're saying is that apart, other than that, you've got no other questions. Uh, and, and when that crisis is over, you'll be uh, signing up. So you get a sort of a conditional close that they sort of agree, yes, once this particular issue is is sorted and then you can set a date and say great well i'll be ringing you in two weeks time uh when we can sort of go forward from there you know that that's something that we could use as well i guess and so what you can see here is what peter has done is he's first answered the question okay like i get you can't do it right now i've heard a reasonable explanation and then it goes straight to the close. So every time we have the objection, we want to kind of move straight back to the close because you know they're not gonna if they've if they you've answered their question to the best of your ability, and you really feel that in your heart, like I've answered this person's question to the best of my ability, you should feel right that you're gonna ask for the close. If they have another objection, you do the same thing. Oh, okay, I didn't know you had another question. Okay. And then you just do that. So a close doesn't have to be this big question. What you want to really feel the close is more of the real talk in the conversation. It's when the talk gets really real and professional. This is when you want to really answer their question. This is where you're really doing the customer service um, of the program. This is where they're, they're already in. You want to kind of assume they're in. You're just doing some customer service. You know, your customer is a little bit scared at this time. So what so, do you say when they say, oh, I'll think about it. I need to think about it. Okay, well, the reason you're on the call is with me today is so that I can actually help you make a decision, an empowered decision. So while you're here and I can answer your questions, why don't you just give me the questions so I can give you the right answer to help you make an empowered decision? Because that's the reason why you're on the call with me today.
And I think, and you can even be bold enough to say, and look, if the decision is that it doesn't suit you, that that's great. That's um, yep. awesome. We wish you the best. Uh, and you know, quite frankly, we we don't want to bother you if you if you feel this is not right for you. So just let us know, and, and we won't. You know, you can stay on our emailing list, but we won't kind of be, uh, you know, following up or anything like that. So um, exactly. I think kind of that reverse psychology is good as well. All right, so we're gonna. Not really reverse psychology. You want to kind of really believe that. If this mm. person is not right for the program, you yeah. want to be close to the qualifier. We're doing, um, remember, report and qualifying. The qualifying is very important. If this person is really broke and, you know, they're taking our program, you know, they won't eat, we're not going to take them. Like, you would have to be mental to accept that person into the program. Yeah. But... If you know this person is right for the program, they're going to get a lot of benefits. Like most people really underestimate how much is in this program. Like this is literally the greatest program of meditation and becoming a leader in the meditation. Like this is like literally that's why it's working so well across the world because it's a great program. And we're getting referrals and things like that. But the main thing is you're going to make sure that if this person isn't right, qualify them out. That they don't even get a chance um, to keep on giving you these things because – you know, if someone's being rude and things like that to you on the call, you know, they wouldn't be in the, they wouldn't be in the program either. No. But as long as that person is, you know, staying with you, you got their rapport, you can help them and you give them all the objections. You know, every they'll say, I think I need to think about it. Well, this is why we got the objections. We can answer it. OK, well, here, let me help you, um, you know, making power decision. You know, there's so many different objections for every single thing we're going to try to you know, make the script a little bit better. But other than that, it's, um, there's an answer to everything. And uh, just assuming that they Is there close. anything else, uh, I'm, I'm conscious we'll wrap this up. Any, anything other topics you think the leaders, uh, salespeople, sorry, would, would be helpful for them? Uh, that's everything I've written down to. Um, so the other thing I know, Josh, you're working on is uh, really trying to, create that uh, pixel so that we identify leads beforehand that are more likely to want to close. So that's, um, you know, it is a working process, uh, but we are, we have worked so that people are coming up the funnel now and getting all the way to the uh, checkout page. Yeah. So, you know, we are optimistic that those leads that are starting to come through in October and November will start to be, more qualified even before they get to the the, the phone call. So um, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to yeah. That. Hopefully, we're going to be able to have scheduled calls so that you'll be able to put in your calendar exactly what times you're available, and we try to focus on you know certain certain times. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. For each country, um, so if you can tell us what times you usually call, like uh, we were just talking with Peter about before nine a.m. 12 lunch and 8.30 in Australia times, like around those times. In UK, weekends, 8 to 9 a.m. Um, and then US, we, we don't really have that many times that... Yeah, it'd be good to get some feedback from the leaders as to which time of day they feel is the most productive. And I get that actually, you know, it does, it's horses for courses. Some people are morning people and some people are night people. But nevertheless, you know, if, if there is some sort of intel out there, yeah from our salespeople to say, yeah, I tend to find evenings work better or a Sunday afternoon works the best. Uh, that's useful information. So let us know about that. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up. So thanks, Josh. And uh, we look forward to seeing the script that you, you work on to see if that helps. All right, mate.